So this next example is an interesting one. Um, we have the product of e to the x and cos x. Now it's interesting in a couple of ways. One is we're going to see that uh, the technique for solving this is a little bit different than what we've seen. It involves a little bit of cleverness, but once you get the idea, you'll be able to apply it to similar problems. The main issue here, um, what kind of makes this a bit more of a challenge, is that e to the x and cos x are both typically not your first choice for u when you're choosing your u and your dv, right? Usually um, you're looking for, you know, u should be like a, maybe a logarithm or a power function, something like that. You usually don't want a trig or exponential. They're kind of on equal footing. So which way do you go? Turns out you can go either way. Um, we'll do it one way. You could play the, the other way if you want. Um, but since we've got it sitting the way it is, let's call this u. And let's call this dv. Right? And so something you might try just as an exercise is, is to redo this. So try again. But take u to be cos and dv to be e to the x dx. Uh, your solution will look a little bit different, but you should get there in the end. All right? But we're going to take this choice. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so if u is equal to cos x, or sorry, u is equal to e to the x. So that means du is e to the x times dx. dv is cos x dx. And of course, that is the differential of sine. So v must be sine x. All right. So let's put that to use and see where we go. What are we going to get? So the first term we get is uv. So we get e to the x sine x. OK. And then minus integral of v du. OK. So v is sine x. du is e to the x cos x. So we have sine x e to the x dx, OK? All right. So this is one of these ones where you kind of look at this and you wonder, like, what are you going to do next, right? So, so just to recap, so this was our, this is our uv. This was the integral of v du in this notation that we use for integration by parts. Um, and this new integral that we get, we notice that it's, well, it's not all that different from the one he started with. All that we, you know, all we've gained is we replace cosine by sine. And, and you start thinking, like, this, this is not getting me anywhere. Um, but if you, if you try it this way, you'll find that you're, you're no further ahead. You're, you're at pretty much the same spot. So you really start to wonder, like, how is this going to work out in the end? Um, so what you do is you do integration by parts again. And it might feel like you're going to go around in circles, but bear with me and we'll see that this actually works out. The important thing here is you have to be consistent in your choice of u and dv. So if you chose u to be the exponential function last time, you need it to be the exponential function again this time. Okay? If you chose dv to involve the trig function last time, you need to do that again. Okay, so this was kind of step one. So at step two, um, we still have u equal to e to the x. We still have du equal to e to the x dx. This time dv is, well, you know what, if we, if we bring that minus sign in, we can take dv to be minus sine x dx, in which case 
V would be cos. Okay. So let's put that to use. And keep in mind that we're not, this part is done. We leave this alone. We're applying that second integration by parts over here. So let's see where it gets us. Well, e to the x sine x, that stays put. Plus, remember we, we took that minus sine and we put it on the, on the sine x so that v would be cos. So we have plus. All right, so we get, we're going to replace this integral with, now we do u times v again. So e to the x cos x minus integral v du. Okay, so now we, we get to here and we're like, wait a sec, wait a sec. So what we had there, right? What are you going to do? Well, here's what you're going to do. You realize that you have two of them, one over here, one over there. That one comes with a minus sign. So if you bring it across, it's going to add, right? So what we have, let me, let me write the whole thing out so you see exactly what's going on. So you have that the integral of e to the x cos x dx is equal to e to the x sine x plus e to the x cos x minus the integral of e to the x cos x dx. So we gather terms, right? That means that 2 times the integral of e to the x cos x dx is equal to e to the x sine x plus e to the x cos x. Well, this is the thing we want. All we need to get it is divide by 2. Okay, so we get 1 half e to the x. If you want, we could factor out the e to the x and write that as sine x plus cos x. And put your plus c in there, right? It should show up somewhere along the way. Okay, and we have it. Again, as usual, if you want to double check, you can take the derivative of the right-hand side and confirm that you get the integrand on the left. It's a straightforward exercise in product rule. I'll leave it for you to try.